This is Kevin Tiemann with Fountain Pen Revolution, and today we're going to talk about how to remove and replace a fountain pen nib and feed. Now there's a variety of reasons why you might need to remove and replace your nib and feed. You may have damaged your nib, you need to buy a new one or replace it with a nib from another pen. Uh, you might be experiencing poor flow from your pen, you want to clean it. You might want to upgrade your nib. You might want to get one of our FPR flex nibs or a broad nib instead of the fine nib that you purchased, but we're going to talk about how to do that. Now, all of the nibs that are available on our website and most fountain pens in general have friction fit nibs and feeds. By friction fit, what that means is friction holds the nib and feed in and they pull straight out and they push straight back in. There's no twisting or turning involved in removing and replacing the nib and feed. So first we'll talk about how to remove the nib and feed. That's pretty simple. What you're going to do is basically you're going to put your forefinger on top and your thumb on bottom and pull. What I recommend is having maybe a piece of rubber sheeting or even uh, one of these jar openers just to provide a little extra cushion and grip. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the nib and feed and we're going to pull straight out. Now some pens re require more force, some less, and this FPR Guru, not too much force was required. Let's do it on another one. This is the uh, FPR Induce. Again, it just pulls straight out. Uh, we'll do it on a Airmail 67T. Again, the nib and the feed pull straight out. Okay, that's sort of the easy part. Let's talk about putting the nib and the feed back in. Now, the first thing you're going to need to know is what sort of nib, what size nib, and what size feed you're going to need. Now, the nibs and the feeds that we have come in two different varieties. We have plastic feeds like this, and you can tell it's a plastic feed because it has a little tail on the end like this feed does. And we also have ebonite feeds. It's a hardened rubber, and these are flat on the bottom like this feed. And so you're going to need to know what kind of feed your pen requires, and then also what size feed. We sell our ebonite feeds in a few different sizes. The plastic only comes in one size. But what you'll do is you will measure the diameter of your feed. Better if you have a pair of calipers, something that's a bit more exact than a ruler, but if you don't, you can measure the diameter of the feed and you'll buy the according uh, replacement feed. Same thing with the nib. Uh, nib numbering is not very helpful from country to country. Nib numbering can be different. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to measure the base of the nib, this narrowest part at the bottom. You'll want to measure the width of the shoulders of the nib, the widest part of the nib and you'll want to measure the length of the nib. Now you can use those measurements then uh, to compare them to other nibs. The measurements of our nibs are listed on our website, so you can use that for comparison. Okay, so you need to know what size nib and feed you need. The next thing you need to know is if there is a certain way in the section that the nib and the feed seat. In this uh, airmail pen, 67T, there's a groove in the section. You won't be able to see it, but if you look closely, there's a groove in the section. And so if I try to reinsert this nib and feed the wrong way, I might damage the nib and feed. Now in other pens, for instance, the FPR Induce, the section is completely round. It means it doesn't really matter if I put the feed in at this angle or if I twist it and I put it in at this angle. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so I need to take a look at my section and find out uh, if there is a certain direction that the nib and feed need to be inserted. Now after I've done that, it's not very difficult. What I'm going to do is I'm going to align my nib and feed. So the feed is pretty close to the tip of the nib but not showing from the other side and I'm going to place them between my forefinger and my thumb like this and I'm going to push them into the pen. Now what often happens is you can get the nib and the feed started this way but you might need a little padding uh, to give a little bit extra force to finish inserting the nib and feed. That's on the FPR Induce. Let's do it on this Airmail 67T. Again I have to find the groove to make sure I put it in in the right place. This one's pretty easy to insert. Uh, we can do it on a plastic feed pen, the FPR Dilly. Now the Dilly does have a groove in the section, so I have to find that groove and insert the nib accordingly. Okay. After you've got your nib and feed inserted, we might need to do a little troubleshooting. What you might find is that after you've inserted your new nib and feed, the tines of the nib have sprung a little bit. What would cause that is that the feed would be pressing up on the nib and causing the tines to spread out. Another thing you might would find is that the feed has a gap between the feed and the, and the nib. Uh, either one of these problems can be fixed easily if you're using an ebonite feed pen. What you'll do is simply heat set the feed. There's a video on how to do this, so I'll just discuss it briefly here. You heat some water to almost boiling. 
uh, just about an inch of it. You place your pen in about an inch of hot water. This will soften the ebonite and cause it to form a good seal with the pen. Now another problem you might be experiencing is you put in your nib and feed and then you find that the, the nib is wiggly. It's wiggly back and forth. It's not holding in soundly in the section. Uh, this can have a pretty easy fix. What sometimes needs to be done, and I find this to be true on these larger size airmail pens with our number eight replacement nibs, is you can take a pair of pliers and just very slightly, and I do mean very slightly, flatten out the base of the nib, the bottom part of the nib, slightly flatten it out. Now what this will do is it will allow the nib to create a greater uh, fit with the section. We can put this nib back in here. Yeah, now it's not wiggling anymore. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Thank you very much.